Right, this is the third lecture on calculus two and some differential calculus of scalar fields. Um, we basically did um, partial derivatives, which are not that hard at all. Right, we had a quick recap. Now this is, as you should remember, this is the arc length. If we have it in uh, Cartesian, we have the integral of the square root of one plus the derivative f of f, f of dash x squared. And if we have it in polis, we have the integral of the square root of r of theta squared plus r dash of theta squared. And that was just a quick recap at the beginning. All right, now a scalar field is a real function of two or more variables, and that is known as a scalar field. So we can have an example, f of xy is a scalar field, because it has two variables, x and y. Uh, f of x isn't, because it only has one. f of xyz has three, so that is as well. And a, and a scalar field is continuous if it satisfies both of these. f of ab must exist, where a and b are any, in, any integer. And the limit from, uh, or the limit of f of xy as xy goes to ab equals f of ab. Now I have a quick example here. Let's say we use this one. If we put uh, f xy goes to ab, then we'll have ab over a squared plus b squared. And that is true here. We have f of ab, so that's right. It satisfies this one. And for this one, we can choose any integer. Now if you look at it carefully, if we chose 0, 0, then it would not exist, because we'd have 0 over 0, it does not exist. So we'd say it's continuous everywhere except for the origin, as it will equal 0 not exist. Right, now partial derivatives, this is not that hard. It's the rate of change as f of xy changes but, but y remains fixed. So. This basically means we differentiate one part and we leave the other part the same and we leave it as a constant. So you can express this is a couple of ways of couple of notation methods. We have d and 1 of f of xy. This means the partial derivative of uh, f with respect to x. If that was a 2, then it would be uh, f of f with the derivative of y. Uh, another way is this method, which is more common. It's a curly d f over curly dx. Now, if a curly, it just replaces the, we usually have a solid, don't we, for derivative. So if a curly for partial derivative. And this is just the same, it means the, uh, the partial derivative of f with respect to x. Right, now I have a quick example. We have f of xy equals x cosine xy squared plus y. Now, we'll have to see what we want to do with this first. And we want to find the partial derivative of f with respect to x. So we're going to differentiate this. Differentiate all the x parts, but pretend that everything else, so in this case the y's, are just constants, basically. So, as we can see, we have a function of x times another function of x plus what is a constant. So, we have to use the product rule here. So, we'll differentiate the first, which will leave us 1, and times it by this one. So, we have cosine xy squared plus the derivative of this, which will be minus sine. Uh, xy squared times y squared and then we have to times that by this normally which is x so we'll have minus xy squared sine xy squared and then this part is just a constant and to differentiate that part it just goes down to zero And we do it the other way around now. So we'll do the partial derivative. That should be a y. We'll put that as a y. We'll have 
Perhaps we'll leave me a few of F with respect to Y. Just pretend that's a Y. Right, so now we want to do it with Y's, as in the X's are constant. So we can do this pretty easily. We do a cosine which differentiates to minus sine and we differentiate this part and take it out so we have 2 uh, 2xy so if we move that out and times it then we'd have 2x squared y and then we we'll times that by minus sine and this part differentiates this as well and it goes down to 1 so that will leave us with this which is minus 2yx squared sine xy squared plus 1.